Mental Fox here with another episode in my playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077. Thank you so much for joining me again. Well, we're here in uh, Victor Vector's office. We've already spoken with him. We don't need to talk to him anymore. We're about ready to head out of here and um, get back on this uh, quest here called The Ride. High risk, high reward, as Dector Deshaun likes to say. Full first rule of the afterlife. So this is it, V. Time to go in, grab the bull by the horns, and make a name for ourselves. But first, let's hear what Dex Deshaun has to say. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and follow the main quest for a bit longer here. I feel like the game is still teaching me how to play it. Uh, so we'll follow the main quest and let the game teach us, teach us some stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Where's the cat? we got to pet the cat. Can I pet the cat? Oh, I'll just step on the cat. <laughs> I can't get close enough to get the cat to pet it. There we go. You gotta get really, really close. Sorry, cat. I didn't mean to step on you. Cat seems fine. Mm. Your heart chakra looks a little out of whack, babe. I can release it for you, but you'd have to watch out for negative energy fields and avoid mean reds. Anything <laughs> red. Mean reds. <sighs> Thanks, Misty. You're the best. And your aura. It needs tending, baby. You've got to brush it daily. It's just no good if you don't. Make sure your hands are clean and caress the filaments of light along their length. They'll be strong then. They'll be firm. Uh-huh. Firm. <laughs> hey, Jackie. V, yo, listen up. I talked to Dex while you were in with the doc. He's waiting in his ride. For you. Ain't but a hop to where he's parked. Next to Gramsci Burgers. Okay. Do my best to talk us up. Okay. Well, let's go meet with Dex. That's what we're supposed to but do. You are not the of your are you... Well, Taking Regina Jones is calling us again. Hey, listen. I've got this delicate matter. That's why I called you. The number of cyber psycho attacks in the city is on the rise. Now that's probably not news to you, but this issue matters to me for a few reasons. There are people who say cyber psychosis can be treated. Right. And I know exactly how that sounds, but I believe even an unproven therapy is still better than a bullet to the brain. If I get a tip about a possible attack, I'll give you a call. Maybe you can investigate before Max Tack hits the scene. But remember, you're not there to execute anybody. Try to incapacitate the attacker, and I'll send someone to pick him up. I hope that's all clear. Hmm. Who are you? Who is this person that keeps contacting us? Am I supposed to know who she is? I have no idea who she is. Incapacitating enemies. There are various ways to incapacitate enemies without killing them. Non-lethal takedowns, non-lethal quick hacks, non-lethal weapons. EMP grenades and some combat gadgets, weapon mods that change damage to non-lethal. If a given weapon, combat gadget, or quick hack deals non-lethal damage, it will be mentioned in the description. Okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind for when I do that Psycho Killer quest three months from now. Alright, let's leave this place. It's kind of a shame to leave this place because it's quite nice. Oh, here's some... Um, Here's something to read here. The world as will and idea. But besides all this, death is the great opportunity no longer to be. I, to him who uses it. During life, the will of man is without freedom. His action takes place with necessity upon the basis of his unalterable character in the chain of motives. But everyone remembers much that he has done and on account of which he is by no means satisfied with himself. If now he were to go on living, he would go on acting in the same way on account of the unalterable nature of his character. Accordingly, he must cease to be what he is in order to be able to arise out of the germ of his nature as a new and different being. Therefore, death loses these bonds, the will again becomes free, for freedom lies in the Esse, not in the operari. Arthur Schopenhauer. Well, you know, a lot of times I read stuff because I feel like, well, I don't feel like it does. It fleshes out the world, right? We learn more about the world. It makes the place 
more real. I'm not sure this helped. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think it's, you know, kind of giving us giving us an idea of what kind of person Misty is, because she reads stuff like this. She has stuff like this lying around in her in her shop. So, um Yeah, anyway, there we go. We read that. Let's move on. Let us go meet with Dex. It is in that direction there. Who is this guy? So he's got like a fist over top of him. Don't know what that means. One of these days I'm going to have to remember to f go online and see what these little icons over top of these guys mean. I mean, if you look real... Oh, what's this? What the hell is this? Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, okay, gosh, sorry. Gee whiz. Okay. Uh, he's got an exclamation mark over top of his head, which would lead me to believe that um, he is alarmed right now. And then I was going to say, this icon that we see sometimes here, to me, looks like bullets. Does that mean he's armed? Maybe that's what that means. Uh, so I'm going to guess that they're using some kind of technology here, maybe, to recreate a crime scene. That's my guess. Interesting, huh? That's kind of cool technology. We could do use our scan thing here, scan this guy. He's a patrol officer. And then uh, this guy over here... Yeah, he's just a beat cop. And, uh, another beat cop over there. Okay, but that's, um... I don't think that's the direction we're going in. We're going in this direction. So yeah, this guy, he's got a fist over top of him, so I guess that means he's unarmed. Right? But what I don't understand is why some people have markers over their heads and some don't. I guess, I mean, like, these are just randos walking down the street, whereas this is a guy that maybe I could interact with. I don't know. Let's move on. Do you truly believe that those who have Apparently we walk very fast, because we're just flying by everybody else. Oh, what's going on up here? Okay. You know, some dude just kind of hanging out up there. Alright, you do you, dude. This is kind of cool. Whoa, holy cow, what is going on up there? Wow, look at that. That is way up there, huh? That's some building. <laughs> what is going on over here? Oh my goodness, wow. Now, I don't know if we're in a bad part of town or if this is just business as usual here in Night City. So here is uh, Dex's vehicle. Look at this thing. It is a Chevillion. Oh uh, no, a Chev. A Chevillion. A Chevillion. Did you see it lower when I came up? <laughs> How thoughtful. But that kind of makes it harder to get into, don't you think? Hello, sir. How are you? Uh, not very chatty, are we? Well, here's Dex's limo, and I guess that's Dex in there. It's very smoky in there. Can we kind of like air this place out a little bit before I get in? I guess not. Mr. V, a pleasure. Dexter Deshaun in the flesh. Ample indeed. <laughs> Let's roll. Mind if I ask you something right off the bangle? <laughs> Would you rather live in pieces, Mr. Nobody, die ripe, old, and smelling slightly of urine, or go down for all times in a blaze of glory, smelling near like posies, without seeing your 30th? Mm, let's see here. How they remember you, that's all that counts. Mr. Nobody's Don't Survive in Night City, or this some sort of test. Uh, Mr. Nobody's Don't Survive in Night City, buddy. Hello? You're either somebody, or you fizzle out into nothing. Night City don't let you choose. Oh, but it does. See, in my line of work, I choose to be Mr. Chill. But folk who try to take advantage, well, they see the beast inside. <laughs> all right, listen close. Scanning a serious job now. Playing gargantuan compared to smashing up a scav home. Hmm. But first, why meet me? Hang on. I got a question of my own now. Why all this, Dex? Why me? Could've had Jackie or T-Buck sitting here. Could've just done this on comms. Call me old-fashioned, but I like to look anyone I do biz with in the eye. 
had the pleasure of meeting the Jackster in the past. And Sweet T-Bug helped this brother out two years ago. So here we are. Besides all that, got a special little pre-mission just for you. But we'll get to that. Hmm. All right, well, tell me more about the job. Let me hear it. What's the job? There's this prototype tech. A biochip, to be precise. Job's to grab it. Simple. Yeah? Guessing it belongs to a court. Mm-hmm. Arasaka. Surely that's no problem. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Dude, that's a death sentence. No, no problem. Just a death sentence. NC's Arasaka's turf. Nobody fucks with them here. What can I say, Mr. B? High risk, high reward. First rule of the afterlife. Besides that, I'm no leadhead. Ain't gonna leave no trace for them to follow because we're gonna do this clean and on the hush-hush. We understand each other. You work this out? Got a plan? Two things. First is a conundrum with the Maelstrom boys. Needs active resolving that. Second to rendezvous. Simple. Client who brought us the job's anxious. She wants to parlay with one of the team. Hmm. Tell me a little bit about the client. Client? What's her thing? Why'd she need to meet? Woman's name's Evelyn Parker. Betting her wasn't easy. Put the word out I was looking for any kind of intel. Right, and? Some brothers from Pacifica got back to me. Told me to stop looking. End of convo. <laughs> Anyway, our little client insisted on meeting someone with skin in the game. You know, we'll be there for it all. Yours truly will be remote. T-Bug ain't no people person, and Jaggy's only good at some things. I know you know what I mean. Pretty much leaves you. Hmm. All right, well, what's the issue with Maelstrom? What's the issue needs resolving with Maelstrom? Got a beef? Slot in the shard. Well, I guess I'll take the shard. Got a classic tale for you. Psycho Gang doing his thing two weeks back. Jumped a Militech convoy. Got away with the gear. Corp don't even know Maelstrom's involved. Now see, convoy was carrying the flathead. A little combat bot, a prototype. And I need me that bit of high grade Militech tech. Because if we don't get that bot, we don't get no soccer chip, and we sure as hell don't get no happily ever after. But don't get excited. It's a single-use toy. Now, I flat out purchased the damn thing from Maelstrom. Problem is, I did so from a gent went by the name of Brick. I say when, because Brick was the leader. Three days after we'd sealed our deal, his friend and gangmate one Simon Randall, a.k.a. Royce, plain dropped his ass. Royce is in charge now. And I got no way of knowing if he aims to honor his predecessor's word. To add to this shipstrom, one merited doubt of Militech has developed an interest in said convoy. Hmm, who's this Royce guy? Royce guy? What's he like? A straight psychopath. Chrome-loving kind. Big club in this town. I'll give you that. Except few of its other members, no matter the stakes, would put a friend and associate through an industrial microwave dryer. Apparently, first thing to burst are the eyeballs. Get a nice clear pop. Then the rest goes goulash. Okay. Anyway, who's the woman? Who's the prima donna? Corpo agent. Internal affairs. Been skidding around town asking after the convoy as if her life depended on finding it. The one lead she's got zip-tied in her trunk. Stick up her ass ain't growing any shorter. So she must be getting desperate. Be wise to think how you could use that. Of course, to do so, you'll need that frazzled cat's info. Sending it now. Well, I guess I know all I need. I think. I think I got everything. Time I got to work. Well, that's just music to my ears. I'll set up the meet with Miss Parker at Lizzie's bar. Flathead, though, is gonna be all you. One more thing, Mr. V. Quiet life or blaze of glory? Hmm? Later now. Okay, I guess I'll get out. Nice car you got here.
Well, street cred. And we've leveled up. Performing certain actions will revo reward you with street cred. Build your street cred to make a name for yourself in the Night City Underworld. Doing so will open up new opportunities. Okay. Oh, Jackie's calling us. Perfect timing. Jackster, talk to Dex. <laughs> yeah, Gordito's a big deal. Literally a nod, yeah. Hmm, let's see here. Um, he was out to work me over or wants to check us out, see if we got what it takes. Um, I think he's out to work me over, man. Claim to want to check our pro cred. But to me, it feels more like he tangled us up with Maelstrom and Militech. There's this combat bot, military prototype. Maelstrom clapped it. Then Dex paid to take it off their hands just before the Gangoons had a switch up in management. I right, heard about that. Royce versus Brick. Hostile takeover. That sums it up. Dex wants us talking to Royce. Gave the deets of some Militech agent, too, but... I don't know how much help she stands to be. Ha. <laughs> Chingon. Okay. Uh, you know anything about Royce? Yeah, you don't sound thrilled. Royce. What do you know about him? He's fucking whack something special. Junky snort junk. Royce snorts chrome. <laughs> okay. And then there's one other thing I need to tell you about. Then there's the other thing. Gotta meet the client who put the job on the table. Evelyn Parker. You? Well, what's Dex gonna do? Ride around in his limo, chat chicks up on the hollow? Parker wants to meet someone on the crew. Dex gave me the nod. I must know what he's doing. So... How you want to play this? Maelstrom or Parker? What's first? Golly, man. Um, I think I'm going to start with the client. Parker. Then got to see her first. See what she's like, what she's after. Orale. In that case, I'll hit the all foods and put my nose to the ground. Step around. Hasta luego. Okay. Oh, gosh, man. We already need to go to Lizzie's bar. Between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. It doesn't matter what time. Just as long as it's in that 12-hour um, span of time there. So, <laughs> a lot of stuff happening here very, very quickly. That was a lot of information to take in. That's a cool-looking car. That was a lot of information to take in. And then we've got Jackie calling us. And at the same time, Dex is uh, texting us. He says, Mr. V, I just want to remind you again that eddies have already changed hands between me and my esteemed maelstrom partners in biz. A round sum of $10,000 10, euro dollars to be precise. So when you're there to take it off their hands, don't let them try to shake you down as they're liable to do. Maelstrom being maelstrom. Okay, let's answer with thanks for the info. Hm, I wonder if I could have been answering these texts all along and I didn't realize it. You'll need it. Best of luck. See if we have any other messages waiting messages waiting for us. Here's some biochip info from Dexter Deshaun. Mr. V, how about a little something to get those taste buds tingling? The biochip in question is in fact the so-called relic. A Novatier piece of tech catering to the top 1%, supposedly the best life insurance money can buy. You and I are going to be neck deep in Euro dollars. So uh, I don't remember which episode it was, the last one or the one before it. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time watching a, a video when we, when we were on an elevator where um, this Stanley guy was interviewing somebody from Arasaka about the Relic chip. It was a pretty long uh, interview, but I watched the whole thing, and I'm really glad I did because now we know what the Relic chip is. We know what a big deal it is. So, yeah, he's looking for the Relic chip. That's pretty interesting. Regina Jones... Um, I guess this is when she introduced herself. Uh, I heard you're working for looking for work in Watson. Okay, so I guess that's how she got in touch with us because she heard we were looking for work. And I don't know who she is though. Is she? she, she for some reason, when her picture comes up, she strikes me as a cop. So I don't know. I really don't know what she is. But anyway, she contacted us. This is how she got in touch with us. So that answers a question there. Now, we leveled up, and I believe we have some uh, perks that we can spend here. Um, we got two perk points available and two attribute points available, and I'm going to guess that since these colors are the same, that we're looking at attributes right now. Um, you can see here we've got our, 
our body up to five, our technical, technical ability up to six, our cool up to five. Reflexes are still at three, and intelligence is still at three. Um, intelligence, if we wanted to, we could... Uh, let's see here. How do we do this? Uh, I think if I just simply clicked on this... Oh, it brings us in here. Hmm. Okay, so in Breach Protocol, we could get Mass Vulnerability. Unlocks the Mass Vulnerability Demon, which reduces the physical resistance for all enemies in the network by 30% for three minutes. That's interesting. Or we get Big Sleep here. Unlocks the Big Sleep Demon, which disables all cameras in the network for three minutes. Okay. That's Breach Protocol. Then there's Quick Hacking over here. Um, Bloodware. Quick Hacks deal 10% more damage. Or Biosynergy allows RAM to recover during combat. Okay. Hmm. So, are these still attributes? Or are these perks now? I don't know. I really don't know. So, um, so I guess if you look over here on the left side of the screen where it tells what cool is, it says if we hold down V, we'd, we'd, we'd acquire it, and then if we click on it, we open perks. Okay, so these are attributes, and these are the perks inside of the attributes. Okay. So, <laughs> um, we have two of each to spend, um, and, uh, gosh, man, um, as far as the perks go, I'm going to wait on those. I'm going to play the game a little bit. Uh, because I may find myself wishing that I could turn off cameras or wishing that uh, I could reduce the physical resistance of enemies. So I'm going to I'm gonna hold on to these and kind of select them as I need them. But as far as attributes go, I feel like maybe we should go ahead and spend some of these. Uh, technical ability, I think I want to keep increasing this um, because, like I said, it allows us to unlock doors and use tech weapons. And I just feel like... This is kind of what I want my character to be, this kind of guy. So we're going to put another attribute point into technical ability. That is now at seven. And um, I don't know, man. Cool. Determines your resilience, composure, and effectiveness in operating from stealth. I like the idea of operating from stealth. So I'm going to put uh, another attribute point into cool. There we go. We've spent our two attribute points. And like I said, we're going to hang on to our perk points until later. Well, I don't know where he dropped us off. <laughs> we can look at the map, uh, but I really don't know if it helps me all that much. Uh, if I turn on the legend, let's see, does this tell me where I live? Okay, here's my apartment. That's the icon for my apartment. I'm looking around on the screen for my apartment. I just want to get an idea, a feel as to where we are in co comparison to my apartment. And um, here's my apartment down here. Okay. And we are currently here. It's interesting, when I zoom in, my apartment goes away. Oh no, it's down here, I take it back. So here's our apartment. And you can see all kinds of things showing up on our map here, right here. Uh, I think this is a fast travel location. Yes, it is. Here is a reported crime. Uh, remember when Victor gave us um, that uh, upgrade? We're now jacked into the NCPD computers. And uh, we can find out when where there's crimes going on. At least I think that came from Victor. Over here is sus suspected organized crime activity. Here is some clothing. We could buy some clothes if we wanted to. This thing here is a drop point used for selling and depositing items. We walked past one of those earlier. Here's a question mark. Undiscovered. Who knows what you might find? Danger high. But we are up here right now. Here uh, is our vehicle. Fast travel point, a uh, place to get some food. Hmm, do I need to worry about food? Here is a place where I could buy net running equipment. Here's a place where you could buy weapons. And here is where the Ripper Dock is. Oh, Victor. I guess that's Victor's place. Yeah, see, this one has a star by it. Oh, okay, not anymore. I guess the little star is telling me that I haven't run my mouse over top of it yet. Okay, interesting. Well, we have a lot of things here to do. We've got two main jobs. We've got one here called the information. Go to Lizzie's bar between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. What time is it currently? How do I find that out? It is 6.09 p.m. 
So I think we just missed our time by nine minutes, right? Because it says... Oh, no, no. I take it back. Between 6 p.m. So we can go there now if we wanted to. Either Evelyn Parker's got the best intel in town, the biggest pile of scratch, or the brightest goddamn lucky star twinkling over her at night. Fuck, maybe she got all three. Still, good thing Dex sent you to that meet. You clean up better. Anyway, if this goes down all right, she'll be a nice new contact for us. And you know the deal. Won't get anywhere without contacts in Night City. So don't fuck it up. Mono. Okay, well, uh, that is what we said we were going to do next. And, um, yeah, so you know, if you look at the map, you'll see that uh, we need to go all the way down here. So we're probably going to want to get in our car and drive down there. So our car is currently across the street here, I think. We can do a little jaywalking here. Oh, they're starting to move. Oh, I better pick up the pace a little bit. Oh, no, no. Actually, my car's right there. <laughs> I don't even know what my own car looks like. Um, I mean, I think this is my car, right? Yeah, this is my car. Get in the car. And uh, let's go for a little drive here. Listen to a little bit of music. So the game kind of wants me to do a U-turn. I don't want to do a U-turn. I'm going to turn right here. Boy, it's definitely telling me to turn around, isn't it? It is not remapping at all. I think this is a one-way street. It's kind of looking like it, isn't it? I think I just turned down a one-way street. That's fine. Whoops. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'll try. Okay, we'll just turn around and go the way the game wants us to go. You win this time, game. It's like even graffiti on the street itself. I guess this is a red light here. Am I really sitting here waiting for this light? Yes, I am. Kind of cool. <laughs> Driving through the city. This is neat. Oh, oh, let's beat the. Oh, it turned green. Okay. Whoa! Okay, we're almost there. Oh. There's the bar over there. I'm not really supposed to, sure what I'm supposed to do with my car. I guess we'll just park on the street. That's what we do, man. We just park on the street. Doesn't matter. Uh, actually, there's a parking lot here. Or a homeless camp. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, my car's driving very, very slowly. Look, it's here. Is there something wrong with my car? I'm not sure what's going on. I got, I got a Ford. That's as fast as I can go. All right, whatever. We'll just get out. Just park it there. Whatever. I'm not sure what happened to my car. I need to get it into the shop, I guess. Well, let's go talk to the bouncers over here. Looking a little put out there, input. Interest you in a preem BD? Uh, hey, brain dance, huh? What's good? What do you got? What don't we got? Women and men of your dreams. Synaptic acting A-listers, no washed up virtue porn boy toys or blow up dolls here. <laughs> Auteur stuff. It'll grip your heart and blow your nerves right out of your body. Pure bit-based ecstasy. That's why people come here. Clearly know how to sell it. Not a sales pitch, it's a warning. I'll give you one word. Bespoke. Not for everyone's synapses. Think you can handle it? Um, another time. You know what? Maybe another time. 
Sure thing, stud. Oh, okay. All right, well. Uh, are you the bouncers? Hey. Reconsidered, huh? No, not really. Another time. You know what? Maybe another time. Sure right. thing, stud. I guess I go in. Do I go in? No? Are you... Am I supposed to take the the brain dance? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Maybe I have to take it? Because I don't. it doesn't seem like I could get in here yet. Okay, okay, I guess I'll take the brain dance then. Reconsidered, huh? Well, I don't think I have a choice. Spoke? Damn, that sounds promising. I get it, I'm in. Couple of things you need to know first. <clears throat> Severe penalties for any unauthorized recording. No drugs, no groping. Someone catch your eye? You do not grab them. You find them in the catalog, ask for a BD, and get yourself a box. I really look that green to you. <laughs> like I don't know. Mm-hmm. Doors open. Okay. Have fun. Oh, thank you. Welcome thank you very much. Oh, thank you. How polite of you. Neat. Look at this. This is a safe area. Oh, I feel so safe and secure already. Lizzy Wizzy and the Meta Dwarves. My, what a sweet little face you have. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, how's it going? My, what oh. a sweet little face you have. You mentioned that. Do you see what the neon sign says <laughs> under Kiss there? Kiss my dead spunk! Whoa, what? What did I, what? Jeez, what did I do? Gosh. Uh, here is something called the Mox. It's one of those stories that is either very simple or very complicated, depending on who you ask. For Janice, it was a mix of both. The Mox came to exist because it had to. We didn't have a soul in our corner, no one to make sure street justice was on our side. So we took matters into our own hands. The Mox is composed of the people who, if any of them disappeared from the streets tomorrow, you might not, you might never even notice. Sex, wor sex workers, anyless artists, aimless rebels, and restless souls who weren't dealt a fair hand. Today, the Mox is thriving, as demonstrated by the booming biz of Lizzie's Bar. Lizzie's is renowned for being arguably the best brain dance club in Night City. Corporate suits, gangoons, pop stars, and locals alike all gather at Li Li Lizzie's to kick back, have a drink, and dip into the most beautifully scrolled and tuned BDs you've ever experienced. Most customers, however, are oblivious to the fact that the club is gang-owned and operated, that the mocks are in charge, watching after their own, just like Li the Lizzie of Legend once did. Know the story? Lizzie used to work here back when it was just a typical dive with a stripper pole, Janice proudly explained. She took care of the girls, made sure Eddie's were falling into the pockets, and their teeth weren't falling to the curb, like this one time. This fucker, editor's note, referring to a Tiger Claws gang member, was having too much fun with one of the girls, and Lizzie just couldn't stomach it anymore. Story is, she deprived the worm of his little tiger balls so quick and nasty, it took them two days to clean up all the blood and puke splatter. Of course, the Claws found out fast, and they flatlined her in a flash. But everyone that she had impacted in some way, they were still around. They came together, fought back, and... Well... You already know the rest. Hello, how are you? You need a new wardrobe, handsome. Oh. Maybe Giovanni Brizzi can save you. Wow, she's a ventriloquist. She can talk without moving her lips. That's pretty cool. Well, we're at Lizzie's bar. Let's open the door. Sit at the bar and ask about Evelyn, okay? Well, I mean, it's not... There's people here. It's not, not packed, but it is only like 6 p.m. or something. I guess these people are brain dancing, maybe. Maybe that's what's going on here. She really likes this song. Oh, that's kind of cool. Alright, let's go sit at the bar. Oh, that's not the way to the bar. Ooh, what's this on the ground here? Oh, this guy must be a, uh, a ripper doc. Hmm. Like black market Back ripper dog, maybe? Come on. 
How are you? What, what is on the ground here? Oh, it's just some medical forceps. Never mind. That is the symbol for a ripper dock on the map, though. There's something on the ground here. Tomato juice. <laughs> I like how it's in quotes. <laughs> Alright, let's have a seat at the bar, I guess. Hey. Get you something. Hmm. Well, um. Does Lizzie still work here? So. Curious. The name Lizzie's. Is that the owner? Not for a long while, no. And it's none too sweet a story. Now I'm just flat interested. Real Lizzie ran a strip joint out of this place back in the day. Lizzie's bar. Girls were paid right, insured, even had decent security. Good spot all in home. Um, until? Let me guess. It didn't last? No. Tiger Claws took care of that. Tiger beat one of Lizzie's girls real bad once. No hesitation, Lizzie blasted the guy's balls off. The gang came back the next day. This was done. Tigers gave this place up to the Mox in the end, though, didn't they? Sort of. The Moxes had to make a deal with them. Luckily, they kept their heads organized quick. The big boss now is Susie Q. But the sign stayed up, out of respect. Biz booms to this day. Hmm. Just like what we read. Just like what we read in the book. What can I get here, man? What's on the menu? Ooh, here's what's on the menu. It's just a bunch of drinks. I mean, they, you know, um, this one applies the hydration status, which increases max stamina by 10% and regen by 50% per second. So they do have uh, benefits to them. Reduces movement speed by 10%. <laughs> reduces weapon accuracy by 50%. So it's just beer. Uh, I can't think of any reason why you would want to drink that. Game wise. Uh, we just have some junk that maybe we could sell. Are you sure you want to sell 14 junk items? Sure, he'll buy it. Okay. This is how much. How many Euro dollars he has? This is how many we have. Well, I'm looking for Evelyn. I'm looking for Evelyn Parker. You know if she's here. Who's asking? Hmm. Um, Big Tipper. Big Tipper. Generous when I get the answers I'm looking for. Appreciate the gesture. Truly. But afraid I don't get paid to talk. Opposite, actually. It's all right, Mateo. I was waiting for this one. Oh, hi. Evelyn Parker. I knew it was you as soon as you walked in. Hmm. Let's take a drink. Be cool, you know? Just be cool and smooth, take your time. That's what cool people do, don't you know? Sense on? Only tequila I drink. <laughs> How would you know? I like to know everything about the people I work with. Either that or it was just a lucky guess. Hmm, I think we might be a little drunk. I think. See the... How the... Our vision is kind of all wobbly now? Interesting. What is this? V? Why meet here? Apparently I don't have enough of something to ask this question. Let's talk shop, the contract. Mind if we talk about the job? Heard you got something for me. Mm. But not here. Come with me. <laughs> I'm not sure I can even walk. We'll be in the lounge, Mateo. Anyone asks, we're not here. Oh, she's in a hurry. Let's move. So, Boy, she is... What? Yeah. Really? Moving quick. Why don't you just tell me the truth? Alright, let's go in. Oh, look at this place. Um... Ooh. I guess we could sit here. Dex had a load to say about you. Called you professional, effective, and trustworthy. I hope he wasn't overselling. Hmm. Well, what does this mean? This that symbol. I could. That is my cool. Yep, I'm the best. I'm good at what I do. Got a solid crew on my back too. Never once botched a job. You do realize I expect more of you than scraping street corner data terms. Much, much more. I'm the best, and I know what I'm getting into. Dex was clear. The job's high risk. 
By the way, you work together long? You and Dex? Hmm. Just started working with him. Let's get down to biz. Or what? You write in Dex's bio? Eh. Well, gosh. Um, I just started working with him. Just started working with him, in fact. I've heard there are two kinds of fixers. Those with stable crews on long contracts and short leashes. Loyalty and predictability they value above all else. Then there's the other kind. Dex's kind. Uh, the other kind? What do you mean? Come on. Can't leave that hanging. Headhunters. They lay their trust elsewhere. Not in people, but in a thing. Their intuition. They bet on potential. And if they lose that bet... It's the last mistake they ever make. I'm hoping Dex's intuition has served him well in this case. Hmm. Alright, well, let's just get down to business here, shall we? Let's cut to the chase. What do you got for me? Your target. I trust you know what it is. Relic. Secure your soul trinket. Key tech in the program, actually. We're tangling with Arasaka. Making this heist one dangerous, risky motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Arasaka's poured billions into personality transfer technology. But me, I just want the data on this one. The chip is tucked away inside Compeki Plaza, the hotel. You ever been? Hmm. <laughs> uh, never had the opportunity. You know, just never rolled through that neighborhood. Damn shame. The fresh they serve is sinfully good. Chef must have made a deal with the devil. So where's this chip hiding exactly? In a suite on the top floor. The room's occupied by Yorinobu Arasaka. Yorinobu Arasaka? He's in town? Don't you read the scream sheets? The media couldn't get enough of Yori coming to Night City. It was all over the headlines. Anyway, he's heir apparent to the Arasaka Empire. Saburo Arasaka's only surviving son. What? So Arasaka Jr.'s planning to grab the reins while in Night City? Only a handful of people in Night City know what the Arasaka's real plans are. Telling me you're one of them? Hmm. Huh. Okay, let's see what's up your sleeve. Yorinobu's got an army around him, I bet. Seriously, he's my target? Yorinobu, I bet he's got an army around him. Top dog like Yorinobu's bound to have an army on call. Hotel's probably a goddamn fortress by now, too. Yorinobu keeps exactly no hustle around. Not one guard. Got rid of them a long time ago. Huh. Why's that? Surely you know what they say about Arasaka Into. Sneeze in Night City, and a blossom drops from a cherry tree in Tokyo. Yorinobu was convinced his Arasaka security detail reported directly to his father. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what's up your sleeve then. Look. If you've got any spare aces up your sleeve, now's the time to show them. Now this should make your prick perk up. <laughs> Yorinobu recently swiped the chip from an Arasaka laboratory. He's made a deal with Netwatch. Aims to sell it to them. Have you spotted my ace yet, or do I need to spell things out? Hmm. Um, Netwatch? Something doesn't add up. Wait, neutral Netwatch is mixed up in this. Netwatch provides net security for all corporations, and collects eddies in the millions for it. But, in this day and age, everyone's in the game, and no one can afford to be a saint. To win, one has to go all in. So what's Yorinobu slated to get in return? So what's Yorinobu do to walk away with? Unimportant. You focus on the biochip. What could cyberspace's watches and protectors offer him? Intelligence on his enemies? That doesn't matter in the least. Because you'll make sure the transaction never happens and I get the chip. Alright, so where does he keep the relic? Fine, so no Arasaka security on the device because Yorinobu whisked it away in secret. Now, where is he hiding it? Well, likely in a specialized container. One that mimics an organic neural environment. On the outside it looks like an ordinary briefcase. And the case is... You'll see for yourself soon enough. Provided we're done gossiping about the Arasakas. Hmm. Um, what's on this relic anyway? One more thing. 
data that's on the chip. What is it? Irrelevant, entirely. We're talking about data Yorinobu snuck out of Arasaka. What's more, he wants to pass it on to Netwatch. Sounds pretty damn relevant to me. Listen, V. The relic. That's my concern. Your concern? Earning a paycheck. Just get the job done. I'll make sure your bank accounts are sated. Alright. Well, what else do you know about Arasaka? What else you know about Yorinobu? Quite a bit, actually. He studied finance and biotech in Tokyo. <laughs> Probably didn't have a choice in the matter, come to think of it. Saburo was grooming him to be his successor. But then Yorinobu vanished to chase his own dreams. Cut himself off from the corp for years. Long story short, though the black sheep returned, the bitter taste remained. But that's only one side of him. There's another. An intelligent man who has always walked his own path. And so has his own designs on the corp. Hmm. Um... It's a risky move with the biochip. Seems to be risking everything with this relic scam. Yes, because he's fallen for the biggest lie this town puts forward. That he can gain and retain control of anything. Alright, okay. what's next? What's next? Now comes the best part. Follow me. Got something for you. Should help you plan. Brain dance from Compeki Plaza. How's a brain dance supposed to help? Need facts, not thrills. <laughs> Think BDs are only good for fondling virtual tits? Jacking off to in those boxes? No. It can be a very useful How tool. Would you good for like anything analyzing else? details, I'm human perception, brakes. even boosted. Doesn't oh. grasp. Oh, I'm insulting you? Exactly what you need. So what's on the tape? Yorinobu's suite. The glorious interior. You'll need to locate the relic yourself. Hope I grabbed enough detail to make that possible. Hold up. Mean to say you recorded this? Mm-hmm. BD rec implant. Why, you object? Mm hmm So you know the guy? Supposed to be Yorinobu's pad on the tape. Means you were inside. You know each other? How else could I get all this intel? I know him pretty well, actually. We have an arrangement. Strictly business. Suits us both, I think. Let's see this brain dance. <laughs> Judy will help. She's a mox, too. Besides, we go back, uh, years. Mm -hmm. V, this is important. Judy's always been there for me. Always helped out. I trust her. But she's a mox. Not the latest member Look, of your crew. That's how it is, huh? Try no, not to forget. I don't hear it. So... You'll be a good boy. No, no. Tread lightly. And keep that tongue on a leash. Relax. Believe it or not, I'm no stranger to tact. In biz or life. <clears throat> hey, there you are. This is V. He's here for that BD role. And V, this is Judy. Best brain dance editor I know. Enough already. Hmm. Let's see here. Not bad. This hardware is top shelf. Sensory SIG amps, acoustic and emotive wave monitors. It's top shelf hardware. Yeah, most of it's customized. Only thing factory are the casings. <laughs> Mod all this yourself? What do you think? Expression translator. Fuyutsuki, right? I thought the matrices on that series were fucked up. They were, but swapping out matrices is simple. And this was the only model that would support additional scanware. <clears throat> <laughs> alright, alright. Compiled your BDF. What do you think? Will it do? Still pretty raw. But yeah, ought to do. Mm-hmm. V needs to get deep inside. That's most important. So, let's calibrate. Tune it to him. Believe me, I've dealt with worse. You should see the jig jig street porn we gotta contend with sometimes. So we drop V inside. Let him look, let him rummage around, right? How about it, V? Raw brain dance. Ever taken a dip before? Hmm. I think. Oh, what's so raw about it? What do you mean by raw? 
How's this differ from the ready-mades? Huh. Ready-mades, provided they're well-made, should feed you feelings and impressions you'd never have the chance to experience yourself in real space. But it's mass-market shit, so it's pre-crafted, hard-coded, fenced-in, and manageable. A raw one? Well, it's more like a virtue in Viro. You get to move around, look at things in detail. Editors use those layers to fish for juicier emotes and impulses, then use them to pad the BDs that go to market. Sit down, settle in, and we'll get you going. Alrighty then. Sit. But there's something over here I want to look at. Here she's got brain dances, concepts. Let's learn a little bit about brain dances. Whoa! Brain dances before we do a brain dance. <laughs> BD of a woman giving birth. Pro, nobody's done it yet. Con, have to hook up a prenatal wreath. Which is more expensive? BD of the most common dreams compilation. Pro, it's doable. Con, I'll have to consistently scroll the dreams of a dozen, couple dozen people over at least one year to catch the repeating themes. Flying, swimming, falling, going to work or school naked. Two BDs scrolled by two actors. Neural tracks set up so that it looks like one BD. Pro, it'd be Nova. Two, con, or con tech for it doesn't exist. <laughs> All right. Well, before we jack into this brain dance, I need to end have this episode. We'll so when we come back next time, we'll have a seat in the chair. We'll do the brain dance thing. So we got something to look forward to there. Pretty complicated story, but I think I'm following it. I'm intrigued. I hope you are too. V, what you waiting for? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. I'm talking to my peeps. Thanks for joining me on this episode, you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you let me know? Maybe leave me a like or a comment. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe. Click the bell so you're notified whenever I post a video. Hey, what you waiting for? And uh, also, um, I'm on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's links for that on my YouTube page. So if you want to join those things, go for it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a seat and we'll get started. Not sure if you join me again in the next episode.